Where is the guy? All right? I don't see him there. Anyway, hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello, Evolution family. It is Wednesday, June 5th, 2019, a little bit after 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm Jose Lambert of Archer Travel Service, and we are broadcasting live from our Archer Travel main corporate headquarters here in beautiful La Crescenta, California. Also in our Archer Travel Media Center, and I'll tell you, the media center got hit hard this week. I don't know if a hurricane hit it or something, but we've been having some technical issues, so be aware. If today, during the training session, if you see it freeze up or if you hear echo or reverberation or anything like that, uh, just you know, put it in your comments. We had some computer issues that we're fixing and all that, but, so just be patient with us, all right? Um, and I want to welcome you all to the Evolution Interactive Training Session. Today we're going to go over Summer Travel Tips Part 2. Summer Travel Tips Part 2. And these are some real good ones. Um, Plus, well, I can't have some surprise, but we're only going to have like one video today, so we had to cut down some of the production values. As you can see, we don't have no graphics box or anything, but we're going to get some of those uh, later on. Uh, so that's what we're going to cover today, but now let's do the first big shout-out to the Evolution agents who always arrive early. And let's see here. I have Molly Foster, Flawless Tracy Bowles. Hey, Flawless. Hey, you haven't called me in a while, Miss Bowles. Lakeisha Garrett. Hey, Lakeisha. Uh, Natalie, is that Natalie Davis? Okay, Carmen Hernandez, Cheryl Shires, hey Cheryl. Don and Don and Kathy from Daytona. I spoke to Don this morning. Uh, Jason Lupian, uh, Lois Haney, and I'll do two more maybe. Let's see here. Let's see. Wait, do I have control of the mouse? You do. I don't think it's on. <laughs> okay, I do, but I don't think it's on. No, there it is. Wait, wait. I don't. Well, okay. Anyway, welcome everyone. Okay. <laughs> so. I don't, I don't, no, I don't, I don't see it moving around. Yeah, no. It's not moving on your end. Okay. Well, that's okay. Um, we'll, we'll, I'll have Amanda here work the scroll and, and we'll get that to an end. There's Marnie Hernandez. Hey, Marnie. All right. All right. So, um, these training sessions happen every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And they are for new evolution agents, returning agents, uplines, um, et cetera. Last week we covered summer travel tips part one. Specifically, this is prepping the client at home and um, before their cruise, all-inclusive, or European tour. Now, look, one of the things that you want to do in your business, because after all, you guys are independent contractors. This is entrepreneurial. It's your own business. Is you want to build value in your business. And how do you do that? By sharing your wealth of knowledge, travel knowledge, uh, you know, advice to your clients. Because your clients have never been to Punta Cana. They've never been to... Montego Bay. They've never been to Cancun. They've never been to Cabo San Lucas. Okay? So they're leaving the United States for the very first time, maybe, a lot of them. So you have to prepare them. And the way you prepare them, they, then they trust you more. And if they trust you more, that means they're going to call you all the time with any travel question that they have, whether it's about a cruise, an all-inclusive, or going to Europe, or etc. So this is what I'm saying about how it's not just being the travel agent like, okay, here's your cruise tickets, goodbye. You know, here's your tickets to your all-inclusive in your, in your airplane tickets. Goodbye. Uh-uh. It's constantly being prepared for them and letting them know what's going on. If you've got clients going out to, let's say, the Dominican Republic, what's been happening there lately? Okay? There's been some major alerts down there. You've got to let them know about it. What about those, the two people that, that mysteriously just died in Fiji? Americans that were traveling in Fiji, which is next to Bora Bora, which is next to Tahiti and all that. If you, and that's a lot of Americans go there. So your clients are going to call you up about that. So you got to be knowledgeable and you got to know how to answer them. All right? And I'm going to show you how to do those tips today. All right, so uh, upline, please inform your Evo agents and new Evo agents about these trainings and where they can be viewed. If you can't make it to these training sessions, you can always review them right here on this Facebook page. As soon as we're done, we leave them in here and you guys can review them. Please tell your upline, you know, upline please tell your other agents, your new agents, hey, you should go in there and check that out. There's a lot of good information in there. Um, and you can find these training sessions in your travel cafe under webinars and training videos, then click on weekly training calls and it'll be there. So that's what we're going to do today. But first some notes. Okay. Today, I'm sure all of you have received the, the, the email from Carnival Cruise Line stating that today the U.S. government imp implemented a new travel restriction that effectively eliminates the ability for cruise ships to travel to Cuba. This means our cruise suppliers are no longer going to sail to Cuba. Now, what does this mean? 
Um, I spoke to Jill Langley. I spoke to Peggy. We're all like, we're all waiting. You have to give the cruise lines at least like five to seven days, like a week, for them to figure this out. They've knocked out the port of call of Havana, and they're going to put something else in there. It'll be costing mill. It might be, you know, Jamaica. It'll be something. But your client will know about that. But it's not. It's not the cruise lines who did it, and it's not the travel agencies who did it. It's the U.S. government who restricted the travel to them. So what I need to tell you is if you've got bookings to Cuba through Norwegian, Carnival, Royal Caribbean, etc., right, give it about five to seven business days, we will get back to you. Now, if you've got clients that are taking that cruise in the next five to six, seven business days, uh, call the cruise line. Don't call us because we're not going to know. Call, call the cruise line, all right, and just say, hey, you know what, and they'll tell you, we haven't made a decision yet, get back, call us tomorrow or whatever, okay? Um, I heard also that Carnival's even giving a $100 shipboard credit for the people that were supposed to go to Cuba that are now going somewhere else, so that's kind of a nice little incentive that they're doing. So just be aware of that, okay? Um, so if you have any cruise bookings that go to Cuba in the future, please notify your clients immediately. Monitor your cruise line that you're working with to see, uh, with daily to see about itinerary changes that you have to inform your clients about. It's very important to contact your clients and let them know what's going on with this. Now, speaking of Peggy, I have another note here. We are noticing in the Carnival Cruise bookings of families. When you book, especially for your new agents, you must keep the family together. You cannot put mom and pop on one deck up, you know, and then put the kids on a lower deck or, you know, down the hallway, you know, like 25 cabins down. Okay, if that happens, the cruise line has the ability to cancel out the kids and then they get kicked off the boat. All families have to be right next to each other, either through an opening portal from cabin to cabin or they have to have each cabin right next to each other. So please be aware of this when you're booking a carnival and you're booking any cruise line, all right? So Peggy wanted us to say that. Uh, again, new upline, we're getting calls from new agents wanting to use cell phones and tell you know this okay again new upline we're getting calls from new agents wanting to use cell phones and tablets too many calls on this issue so remember the golden rule I had an agent that called me and she's like almost in tears because her upline said oh no 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 you can use your phone to book Expedia and that's what she did she booked Expedia.com and she's going can we transfer them to no my hands are tied my hands are tied I don't know I mean we shouted from the mountains <laughs> but you guys still go, oh, wait, 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 let me, let me show you here, on my cell phone, on my tablet. And it's like now she's upset, she, she lost, you know, some good commission. And it just, it breaks my heart that, that, that I have to say that to her. So please, 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 upline, you know, do that, okay? Um, what else? Okay, so that's, you guys know about the rule on that. Uh, another thing for the new upline and the upline in general, tell the new agents to check the voicemail box. You guys call us, we can't answer back to you. The fact that the voicemail box is not set up or it's too full. Or the new messages, this person is not available at this time. Really? I mean, it's really simple. To be successful in this business, you got to be reachable. You got to have your act together. You got to deliver the quotes on time. And you got to just follow up. You follow up, they'll book with you, but you got to be reachable. I, I, that's what this is, because if you got clients, you know, that are in Europe and an emergency happens, they need to get in contact with you. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, attention all uplines, we're getting too many email requests about email changes. So, you know, I, I've come up with a remedy for this. If you are in your evolution profile, and let's say that you have josenlambert.gmail.com or something. Right? And you know, no, I want to change it. I want to change it to Jose Action and Adventures. Right? Use that email in your evotravelagent.com website. That will solve that. So use that email, your travel email, for your evotravelagent.com website. When you fill out your profile for that, use the new email in there. Okay? That way you don't have to wait and they got to contact you from Las Vegas and change it and do all kinds of things. Okay. Uh, we're getting... Oh, 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 oh. Had a real issue with some fraud this morning because an agent used PayPal. Again, I, it's like you guys, we, we tell you these and then you call us up going, I got a problem, I got an emergency. Well, who told you to use PayPal? Uh, 
you know, somebody tried to do this, somebody tried to do that, you know, I'll say, okay. Um, is everything okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> Amanda's like, okay. Um, but, so don't, don't do PayPal, okay? All the vendors, suppliers, cruise lines should be paid with a credit card, not with Money's coming from the agent card or something, you know. If, if you're dealing with people that don't have credit card, debit card or something, then you know something's wrong. That, that doesn't make sense to me. You know, if they do book travel, what if they need cash? I mean, you know, one of the things you, that you don't want, and we're going to talk about this, is, you know, and there is a webinar about how much cash someone should take on vacation. And not really, not, not in these days and times you don't want to take a lot of cash. You know, you just want to have that security of your card, your debit card. So if you have a client that doesn't have those things, and he's taking, you know, $1,500 to, you know, Punta Cana for the weekend, that's an issue. You know, we, we, we got to make sure that he's going to be okay. He's not, you know, flashing it around or stuff. Okay. Um, so with that being said, so all credit cards, payments, go to supplier, vendor, and cruise lines. No more of this PayPal stuff. All right. Let us now go to the Travel Cafe. And let's... Uh, Go there. Let me know when I'm when we're there. All right. Well, so we're here in the travel cafe. Let's uh, scroll up a little bit. Well, right there. Okay. Well, go, go, back down. Back down. Back down. Okay. Stop. 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 Uh, countdown to the Evolution Convention. 14 days. Woohoo. Okay. 14 days. Uh, 16 hours. We have some new custom marketing videos. Uh, somebody emailed me like they didn't know how to how to use these marketing videos. It, it, call me if you got a question. Like, like I don't know what to do with it. You know, I'll show you what to do with it. We've got a couple of other ones that are going to be built. Uh, the new ones are for weekend getaways, all inclusives. And why aren't you a travel agent? So there's a marketing video to help you recruit more agents. Let's scroll up, please. Stop right there. Upcoming events, uh, June 10th, Travel Impressions webinar. You can click on there and get registered for that. They're going to be in Las Vegas. Definitely, I would recommend that you go to see them, okay, and, and attend that webinar. All right, let's scroll up. We got more marketing videos. We got Pleasant Holidays, Caribbean Focus. We got Jose's training call, Ron's call on Monday. Congratulations to the new top producers. And let's just stop right here and we can go back to the top of the page. I just want to talk a little bit about the E&O insurance. You guys, we have really worked on trying to get that for you the best possible way. It's $5.95. That's, that's cheaper than going to Starbucks. All the new agents should get involved in that, and I'll put that link back on here. Okay, we're losing that link, but I'll get that back on here, okay? So don't worry about it. All right, now, let's go now to the slides, right? Okay, so we're on the slides. All right, last week we talked about um, travel tips, and, and I mentioned enroll in STEP, which is a Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. Well, when I got back to my desk after we did the, the training, I noticed that we have agents from the United Kingdom here, and they also have agents from New Zealand and from Australia. So, what's happening here now? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, all of a sudden a box showed up, and I'm like, wait a minute, where's this box coming from? So, yeah, we have agents from the UK, New Zealand, and Australia. So, what I want to show you agents, let's go to the next slide. Okay, enroll in STEP. Australian agents, listen up. You have a smart traveler program there. There's the link. All right, I'm going to leave it up for a little while, but Australia, you have a smart traveler program. Just like we talked about last week, New Zealand agents, you have a smart travel program right there. So your, your clients can register with these government, you know, it's free. And if they're in Spain or something, something happens, it's like an Amber Alert here in California. It buzzes your phone telling you to go to the nearest hotel, consulate, or um, uh, embassy. Uh, for, for your safety. The United Kingdom does not have one. They used to have a, a travel program, but now what they have is they have a Twitter feed, and you can go in there and register that, and also you can register for them uh, at facebook.com at FCO, which is Office of Commonwealth or, or Foreign Commonwealth Office. That's what it is, Foreign Commonwealth Office. So you guys, there, there's your information, and this is what you should be forwarding to your agents, I mean to your clients, Okay, in Australia, New Zealand, and United Kingdom. And forgive me if I forget about you guys sometimes, okay? All right, let's go to the next slide. All right, some of the travel tips, part two. Let's, all right, this is going to be about travel safety and destination. I would definitely get some paper and pen or a pencil to take some of these down, okay? Let's go to the first slide. 
Number one, try to fit in. There's nothing worse, and you guys know what I'm talking about, when you, and you see this all the time when you go to travel. There's always, I kind of call them the ugly Americans, you know, but we want to be cool. We want to be like the David Bowie, the young Americans. Young Americans. Remember that one? Okay. Anyway, we want to try to fit in. We ask for help. We're not really obnoxious. We're not, you know, we try to fit in like we're part of the country or that, we're, that we should be there enjoying ourselves. Now... One of the things you want to do is you want to be kind of cool about this. You don't want to look like, you know, deer in the headlights as you walk out of your hotel room going, oh, I don't know where to go. So if you've done all your research properly and your client knows about where he's going and, and they've done all the steps that we talked about, you know, last week, that was preparing. Now it's now we're there. Now we're here at the location. Okay, let's go to the next slide. All right, so we're here. We've arrived. What you want to do is get a business card from your hotel, Okay. And why would you want to do that? The first thing when arriving at a hotel overseas is take a business card from the front desk. That way, if you ever get lost, you have the name and address of the hotel in the local language. Large populations around the world do speak English, but have something in local language that you can show locals and taxi drivers. It's an extra bit of insurance. So this is a really good tip. So when you check in, you know what? Let me grab that. Okay, next slide. Phone the front desk of your hotel. After you check in, use your cell phone from your room to call the front desk and ask if you can speak to yourself. If the hotel gives you the room number, that's a red flag. The response should be, let me connect you. Let me connect you. You understand what I'm saying here? If the hotel gives you, like, okay, I'm Jose Lambert. Can you connect me with Jose Lambert there at the Embassy Suites in, you know, or Punta Cana? Yes? Yes, Jose Lambert's in room 755. What? No. You don't want that information being sent out to any type of stranger that's calling in. You just say, let me connect you, okay? And if that does happen, go down to the front desk, speak to the manager right away, all right? Uh, so scam alert, here's another thing that they do. If you're in the hotel room and someone calls from the front desk, saying they're from the front desk, asking you or needing you for, a, oh, you know what? We forgot your credit card, or, or we, need, we need to get your credit card number again for this account, and they want you to you know, tell it to them over the phone, Major red alert. Clients should never give the credit card information over the phone, especially when you're in a foreign country. You should always be in front of someone that you know what you're doing. Okay, let's go to the next one. Floors, four to six of uh, hotels. Security experts agree that staying between the third and six floors where rooms are higher enough to avoid easy break-ins and are low enough to be reached by fire engine ladders in the event of an emergency or etc. Be sure to make your room location preference known at the time of booking your room, too. This is kind of important, especially when you're dealing in Europe, in the old world, okay, where the buildings are far more accessible to fire. They're like, oh, well, look what happened in Notre Dame last spring. I mean, you know, that's what I'm talking about. It's just like one spark, okay? And as you notice in the older cities, Paris, uh, Amsterdam, well, you know, London, um, it's – the the fire departments aren't as, you know, they're not like in New York City where they can go like, you know, 20, 20 stories up. You know, they're smaller. So be aware of this when you're booking your client's hotel. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, info, yeah. Your client should have all the information readily available in case of any type of emergency, medical, and et cetera. You know, they should have where the embassy or consulate is when they're, you know, traveling. They should have that. If you're in Spain, if you're in Barcelona, where's the consulate office? That, that way, if something happens, anything can happen, you can go there right away and ask for assistance. Okay, let's go to the next one. Tourist attractions fit in. Now, you know what? I have a conflict with this photo because I'm kind of like going, is she really fitting in or is she like going, look, I'm from the San Fernando Valley and I'm here in Rome, you know? And I'm like, no, that's not what you want to do because, you know, all those people in the background there, they're like going, there we go. We got that one, you know. And let me tell you, there in Europe, it's way different than in the United States. Th th those guys are pickpocket artists. They are. Okay? We don't have pickpockets here. I mean, you used to have them in New York and in, in the subways and stuff, but not, not anymore. You know, but there in Europe, Paris, Barcelona, Venice, Rome, and, and they see somebody like that. Look, okay, try to fit into your surroundings. Once you've done your research, you can start with your visit to a new destination if you're one of the locals. This is not, this is not only sound advice, but it's a good safety tip as well. 
You make yourself vulnerable to con artists if you stick out like a sore thumb with your massive backpack and your sunglasses in your hands and two cameras and confused look on your face. You'll draw, most, you'll draw less attention to you if you try to blend in. All right, so let's go to the next one. Avoid flaunting items. Do not flash your wealth. Please, please, please. You know, what's that bag that, uh, Amanda? Louis Vuitton. Louis, you know, hey, look, leave the Louis Vuitton at home. Don't be out there, you know, with your, you know, $1,500 camera and you're this and you're that or you're whipping out, you know, your, your iPhone 18. Look, I got my new iPhone 18. No, don't do that. It's just to draw the traction to you. All right? So avoid doing that. All right? Whether this is in cash or expensive gear, showing wealth will only make you more appealing to scammers and pickpockets. Carry a dummy wallet with little cash in it so you can give, um, that you can give this in case you get mugged. Okay? And I'm telling you, I mean, th this happens all the time. Same thing. Don't be traveling with your passport on you when you're out going to Paris. or Leave it in your hotel room where it's secured. Have a copy of it with you. Okay? That's your best bet is have a copy with you. Let's go to the next slide. Monitor bank and credit cards. Yeah, <laughs> your clients should monitor the banking and credit card use daily to see if there's any type of other activity on these accounts. That's, a, that's number one. You should be doing that daily. Uh, go to the next one. Here's an easy one. Cover peephole on your room door. I know, it sounds kind of dumb, but peepholes are easy for way people to catch a glimp inside your room. Putting a bandage on it is one of the easiest things you can do to prevent that from happening. And all you got to do is just move it if you want to answer it. Okay, go to the next one. Family, friends, and travel itinerary. Okay, leave your travel itinerary with someone or even multiple you know, members of your family or friends that you trust. Let someone, anyone know where you're meant to be. It doesn't make you any less independent or any less cool. In the event things you know, go south, you'll have someone who can act immediately to aid and assist you and even an attempt to locate you. So let somebody know where you're at. Okay, and that's pretty much it on that one. So let's come back, and then uh, what are we going to do next? Oh, I know. Okay, okay. All right, so, um, all right, so those are just like some travel tips um, for safety that, that, that we really, you know, you guys, if you give this to your clients, they're going to love you. They're going to love you, and they go, wow, that's so much information. Wow, and that's really great advice. And, you know, I should call, you know, Don and Kathy again when I go to Punta Cana or if I want to go to Barcelona or I got to call Cheryl Shires when I go to, to London or, you know, I got to go call, you know, Judy Appling when I'm going to go to New York City, <laughs> New York City, okay? So, you know, use those because, look, man, they're only going to go once or twice to Paris. They're only going to go once or twice to Punta Cana, okay? All right. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. And now let's roll the commercial.
<clears throat> oh, Chuck. Man, this is some place you picked. You see the view? I got 37 different kinds of tea here. Whoa. Look at that suit. Smell delicious. Thanks for the carpet sample, Chuck. It's Charles. Whatever you say, Ch Charles. See you at the sales meeting. Okay, so hey, you know, that's how we are at the Evolution Convention in Las Vegas. I saw this and I went, you know what? I, I thought that was Tony Evans there for a minute, but you know, it's a great spot and it's really kind of funny. Um, kind of like a little spy story about carpet, p p carpet patterns <laughs> that are in the case. So that was kind of funny. All right, so uh, let's do a little bit of Q and A right now. And that's, and you know what? That's how it's going to be when we go to South Point. I just want to show you for you guys that are not going, that's the kind of action that we're going to be at. We're all going to look sharp. We're going to look, you know, and the ladies, the evolution ladies, they do it up. The hair, the you know, they do it up. So it's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Let's go to some Q&A here. All right. Uh, let me see. I have control of the mouse. Let me see down here. Let me see. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right. Let's see who's in the house here. Evolution. Fixing now. Please come back in five. Okay. I don't know. Replying to Carmen. Maria O. Nina Mitchell. Yes, it's a demo of a promo video. Uh, yes, Cheryl. Rayburn, is, is this a commercial supposed to be here? Y yes, it is. It was supposed to be a little bit funny. Everybody's like, it's not a commercial. It's a movie. It's, okay, so uh, let's see. Any other any other questions? Lakeisha Garrett, I'm going to start Travel Tip Tuesdays on my business page. Okay, Lakeisha, and if you need help with that, I'll give you some more tips. Okay, there's always plenty of tips to go. Uh, thank you for all these great tips. I'm going to rewatch and make a list. Eileen, uh, Eileen Earhart. Okay. There's Tracy Wright. Hi, Jose from Australia. Now, Tracy, if you just got here, I gave you some information in the beginning of the slide presentation. So go back and watch that about the Australia Smart Travel Program. All right. Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey Stepan there. And Michelle. Wait a minute. Hey, Ron Archer. I'm, I'm not Ron. Okay, Michelle Hargo, Audrey Sims, Thompson, great advice, thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Audrey, that's really nice of you. Cheryl Shires, I learned that when I lived in Germany. Something I must have said or something. Okay, Sheila, my husband has me take off all jewelry and anything that makes me stand out, well, and we only take a little cash with us when we travel. That's a really good thing, Sheila. That's very smart, great info, great information. Michelle Hargrove, laugh out loud. I, I tried to be witty. Uh, <laughs> let's see, and let's see, let me scroll down and see if we have any other questions. Uh, Tracy Wright, great advice to say about our Smart Traveler website here in Australia. I always send my clients there before they travel. Hey, very good. Yeah, there's a lot of countries that do that um, around, around the world, and, it, and it's a really good thing uh, to do that. Um, Jose, how do I arrange gospel cruises? Uh, Miss Lashivia Watley. Uh, Miss Watley, could, would you please email me or call me? Because um, there's certain, uh, there's so many Christian denominations, and then there's so many different cruises that you can get to choose from. Um, like I know uh, one supplier um, that um, was doing like, even women, you know, women point of view in, in Jerusalem. I mean, there was a, that was a really great program that they had. I doubt if they have it anymore, but um, yeah, so call me, Miss Watley, and you know the number, just contact me and, and I'll help you with that to arrange gospel cruises. Okay, um, if you already have purchased the e and insurance, do you have to pay for the pool too? Okay, Eula Dudley, call me and talk to Krista here at the office, okay, because I don't know that answer. So call me and, and talk to Krista. Ask that and they'll, and they'll tell you. Michelle, Cassandra, any, okay, Lashiva Watley, again, anyone with suggestions or resources to how to book, okay, I, I already told you, you call me. With guest speakers, I have several parties interested in doing gospel cruise. Yes, I will help you with that. Evolution Travel Cafe, I guess we were off for like five minutes. What's, what's up with that? 
No, no, no. She was replying to a comment. Oh, yes. It's a demo of a promo of a video. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, um, Donna, way to go. Jose, nice tips. Appreciate it. Dewana Watson, how is it? Can you explain the cancellation process for FunJet through Vax? I, they had all the protection insurance. Okay, if you're, Dewana, if you're having an issue with that, all right, listen, all right, here's the way it should go. If you're working with a supplier, a vendor, a cruise line, anytime you call them, you want to make sure you write down their name. Say, so if you're calling Expedia Tap and you need a question answered, saying, who am I speaking with? It's Bill or Mary or Jake. It's, it's Mary here at Expedia Tap. That way you can contact me going, I had an issue with FunJet. We, we purchased the insurance. Something didn't happen. Who did you speak to? That way we can go and talk to that person and say, what's the, what's, you know, and we can see what's going on. And the thing about the insurance, we're getting too many calls of people canceling that. You see, it's summer. So everybody booked stuff, you know, last winter for going summer. Yeah, we want to do that cruise to the Bahamas. We want to do Jamaica, you know, doing all that stuff. Now we're getting cancellations. And now we can't cancel because... For some reason, you didn't charge the insurance, the insurance thing, all taxes, fees, and insurance on the cruise booking. So what's happening is if they cancel, they lose their money. So you should never, ever, you know, if the, if the, listen, if the client's saying, if, if, if it's $12.50 for a three-night cruise, you know, for two people, let's say, on Carnival, it's $12.50. Well, can you make it cheaper? Yeah, I think I'll take the insurance out. No, don't do that. It's twelve fifty. The price is the price. When you take it down because of seventy dollars here and a seventy dollars, it's one hundred and fifty dollars, and the client says, "Oh, wow," I said, "Yeah," but if you cancel now, you're going to lose all your money. You're going to lose all that twelve fifty. So make that sure that you have that. Okay, um, Donna, and let's see here. Oh, it's almost time to go. And we'll play out some, uh, thank you, Jose, for all that stuff you do. Jeffrey there, thank you, Jeffrey. Okay, Miss Dudley, you're, you're gonna call me, all right? Kate Morales Dixon, I have a client booked for Bahia Principe, scared to death. All right, Miss Kate Morales Dixon, <laughs> yeah, I know, it's, uh, I, I was reading the paper too. Again, you guys, you've got to be ahead of the curve. What Miss Dixon is talking about here is we had two people that passed away at the Bahia uh, Principe in, in uh, Dominican Republic, and then we had someone else just die there yesterday. So everybody's kind of like freaking out what's going on over there. They're, they don't suspect foul play. These are health issues, but there's something not right there. Now, if you got clients that are going there, just tell them, relax, it's going to be fine. And let me tell you something. When this kind of stuff happens, the Bahia Principe, the, they're going to bend over back. So, oh, sure, you want here's, here's a Here's a resort credit. They're going to offer you some things there. So just tell your clients to take a chill. They're going to be fine. Nothing's going to happen to them, all right? But now remember, give them some of these travel tips. You know, a lot of times people go to these all-inclusives, and the key to going to an all-inclusive is moderation. <laughs> I'm talking about drink moderation. I'm talking about food moderation. If you're eating and drinking, and you're out there in that sun, and da-da-da, it's too hot, it's too good. Okay? Be careful. Moderation. All right. Um, Regina. Regina, yeah, me too. I'm staying at the Lux. Wait a minute. Wait. We're flying to Ida. Okay. I don't know. When you guys are talking to each other, I'm like, eh. Evolution Travel Cafe is fixed. I don't know what that's about. Audrey Sims Thompson, same reason it's getting crazy in the Dominican Republic. Is that where they're going? Yes, Audrey, they're going there. Um, Richard Burns, I have a replete client, but this time I'm using Vax. Do I need to email him the credit card form? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's go back. You know we've been talking about the credit card form for the last 12 weeks, uh, and we're going to be talking about it some more. Here's the thing with that. Remember, all VAC stuff, travel impressions, FunJet, United Airlines, American Airlines vacations, Southwest Airlines vacations, Blue Sky Tours, all that goes to credit card forms at archertravel.com. Everything else, Expedia, Fare Grabber, Cruises, all that gets done in your website, your, your travelagent.com website. And let's do one more. Uh, okay, I think that's it. So, all right, and call me if you need anything. All right, I'm going to be here. Um, we got some great plans for the convention. I am really looking forward to it. We're two weeks out, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and I hope to see a lot of you there. So, listen, you all have a great week. Call me if you need anything, and I'll see you next week. All right, bye.